you know, I don't even know where to start with this game. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I thought this was going to be a fun game based off of that first period. I thought that first period was set a really good standard for what this game was going to be. I thought, oh, we're going to have a close game. The Jets are flying out there. They look good. They look like they're rebounding well after losing a pretty close game to the Canucks on Friday. They had the weekend off. Didn't end up mattering. But what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another recap reaction. For game 18 out of 82 for the Winnipeg Jets 2021-2022 NHL season. Where they lose to the Pittsburgh Penguins by a final score of 3-1. to one. Let's jump into this, talking about that first period. Because it was actually at least good and entertaining. You know, if you guys want to hear some positives, you know, this is the only part you're going to hear is the first period because Helling made a great save off the bat. He got kind of hang out to dry there off of the faceoff. Pittsburgh made a really good win and got possession early. Came in well, a really good rush on Hellebuck. He really covered up well, uh, Was took, took control of his crease, as I like to say, and really did a good job on bailing the Jets out early. And Helling had a fantastic game tonight. Christian Jari, as well, has been fantastic over the last three games. And I'm not going to lie, both goalies, again, were pretty damn good in this. So it sucks to see Helly losing these really close games. He lost, obviously, uh, to Skinner on Edmonton. He lost to Demko the other night, even though he wasn't in net. But it was Eric Comrie, but still they lost as a team to their hot goaltender. And Eric Comrie was pretty okay as well for our backup goaltender, I'm not going to lie. So he comes into this game. Having a great performance, he's been a fantastic down the stretch for November. The no month of November, I think, has been one of his best months in his NHL career. He was, he's been fantastic in this month. And the team kind of failed in front of him. How I'm going to describe this game is the Jets blew their load, their all their work ethic, everything they had in the first period. At, after that, they got nothing left. The first period, they were really good. The second period, they looked way, way, way slower compared to where they were in that first. Even near the end of that first period, they started to get a little choppy, but they still looked like, you know, a very awakened, skilled team. The second period, they looked like someone was getting ready to go to bed. They had that glass of warm milk. They were in their bed reading a book, and by the third period, it was lights out. That was kind of pathetic. And as it got worse in that third period, because by the end of that, what a pathetic display with the goalie pulled. We'll get to that. Had to say it early because it's in my head right now, just recording after and. God, I just don't understand that. I, I do not understand for the life of me how that can make any sense, personally. But nonetheless, you have a great first period. Dominic Tadonato, his second goal of the season, absolute snipe after a great possession uh, shift by that fourth line. They were really good tonight. I like the fourth line. I like Riley Nash and the penalty kill, even though he's penalty kill wasn't that great. I thought he was in the right place at the right time. I thought that the Jets kind of had a pretty good game until they kind of got sloppy and tired. It looked like a team that ran out of gas. They had nothing left in the tank. By the time that second period rolled around, they were, you know, on fumes. In the third period, they had nothing left. They were pulled over on the side of the road, hazards of hazards flashing, and no one was coming to save them because the Penguins were flying. The Penguins knew they had this game in the bag, and they not even like they played a great game because you obviously go through that second period where it is really, really good, close hockey. Uh, the second period, you get that goal scored by Jason Zucker to make it a 1-1 game. Five minutes in into the second period. Obviously, again, the Jets are starting to lack a little bit. That's a good goal, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter. But in my opinion, what Pittsburgh really did well is that they waited the Jets out. They kind of played their own game. They could. They didn't They didn't really dominate a lot of the time. Uh, the, even though they ended up getting 36 shots on net, like I said, the Jets fell asleep in the third period. They were out lights, out, lights out. So they really didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, opponent to deal with in the third period. But the first period, they got really outplayed. Second period, they kind of was, a, you know, they started to really take back control. They get a tying goal. And then look at the Danton Heinen goal. The Danton Heinen goal is a prime example of being in the right place at the right time. There was absolutely nothing that Connor Hellebuck could have done there. The puck was literally on the ice for a split second before anyone even saw it. It was already tipped behind the net uh, up, and, up and around Connor Hellebuck. There was nothing he could do there. Um, and, and no goaltender was going to be able to stop that unless they did some mirac miraculous spinorama, you know, flicks it out of the crease with his glove last second or something miraculous like that because that's the only thing that's going to stop a play like that and that's why this game's so frustrating is because the Jets played a great first period second period like I said they were going downhill third period they just gave it quits and by the time you got to the third period when they actually wanted to make it matter you would have a cut you know a decent move in the, in the neutral zone oh the Jets are no three on two or a three on three they have some space and they just get stopped right at the blue line Adam Lowry tonight I don't know how many times I saw him try to drive play in down behind the net and then make a play like a third line fourth 
fourth line grinding center does his game and he couldn't get past the blue line he got held up not even by two three guys by one guy that he didn't even that ha he had position on so i just don't understand this game uh for the for the uh winnipeg jets i, I don't the winnipeg jets today they just shit the bed they fell asleep, and they let down their great goaltender after a good performance, and it sucks because this is the one game stop you have back at home before you go back on the road. It's been a tight schedule. You had some days off in between this game, unlike when you had the Vancouver-Edmonton. I can understand being that tired in Vancouver, but you had some time off. I don't get how they fell asleep so badly in that third period and played so sloppy. Look at the, for example, look at the, th the empty net goal. Obviously, it's an empty net goal, you're thinking whatever. But it was some of the worst zone coverage I've seen by the Winnipeg Jets this season. They get Connor Hellebuck right to the bench. They get six attackers on. And what do they do? Absolutely nothing. They all get jumbled up, cutting into their uh, offensive the Pittsburgh zone early. And the rest of them are caught just in this no man's land. When there's no, uh, pit and then the Pittsburgh has no one to deal with. I thought it was an icing at first. And then I realized, and I'm like, well, you got to be kidding me. At least, let's say, at least we didn't see a giant hit happen. When he was skating down, because the last time we saw a play like that happen to the Winnipeg Jets where the player took it in like that, it was Jake Evans. So, at least we don't have to worry about a massive fight today and the online deal bullshit we'd have to deal with as Jets fans. But moving on from that, what else do you need to say about this game? It's just disappointment. This, this game is pure disappointment. They started off so strong, and then they just finished so poorly. How do you fix this? I know that's what you're wondering. Jake, what would you do? You know, and if you're not wondering what would you do, what would Paul do? What would some, what would, anything can be done to make this team better after these two really bad performances against teams that they could have put up better fights against and they could have, that they should have probably won against the Canucks. They played the better game, in my opinion, and they just had a bad penalty kill and you're not going to win when your penalty kill is that bad and allowing that many goals to the worst power play in the entire league. And then you come into the night, you play the Penguins, they've been hot, they've gotten healthy, and you play a really good first period and then you just suck. How do you fix this? I think what it comes down to, again, is misusage of players. I'll keep preaching this until the Lions are put back to the way they should be. Blake Wheeler tonight wasn't horrible, and I'm not going to crap on Blake Wheeler, and I haven't on this video so far because he had, in my opinion, a decent game. He made some good puck keeps. He uh, made really good moves moving into the, uh, the zone. He made some good passes. Blake Wheeler did the best that he could tonight playing with those guys, and I thought he had a pretty damn good game and also a couple good scoring chances. But that does not change the fact that there were times where you could just tell that Blake Wheeler didn't have anything left to give on that shift. He was all tired out they were putting way too much on him to kind of move play and make these necessary plays to get the offense kind of started that they failed and they would turn the puck over and then you get blake get caught flat footed getting to the bench why was that happening because you're asking a guy to do too much blake wheeler had a great game and christian viselainen also had a great game today why not make customize your third your third and fourth line move things around and have a blake wheeler playing down there on the third line with adam lowry and christian viselainen why not do that I, I don't understand this why you, I would love to see what Christian Veselainen could do with a guy like Blake Wheeler. I think Christian Veselainen could become a very deadly bottom six goal scorer for us, similar to what we got even in with how Joel Armia played. Obviously, maybe not as defensive, but that type of guy that can play clutch, clutch goals and can still have some offense to his game. Veselainen has so much potential. He just needs a real guy down there that can help get him the puck. And I think Blake Wheeler would be a great fit. What does that leave you with uh, Sveshnikov right now playing there? What do you do? You just move him back up to the line that he should already be on with Connor and PLD. You keep the line the same with Kopp, Shifley, and Ehlers. That's a great line. They played some pretty good looks tonight, even though they were tired. Uh, I, I like that line for the most part tonight. There are these little tweaks that you do. If you're the coaching staff right now for the next game going on this road trip, and I guarantee that the Jets will win and win their next game if these changes are implemented. I'll guarantee it. With the time off traveling, and I know that sounds crazy to guarantee a win as a fan and whatnot, but that's how confident I am about those changes. Blake Wheeler shuffling things around, putting Svech back with a team that can really use his skill better, have that whole bottom six kind of get rejuvenalized with uh, an addition of a guy like Blake Wheeler, and you have a really good deep team with a lot of lines that can score at any moment. That's a very, very valuable skill to have in the NHL, especially when trying to win a Stanley Cup. That's what I think that they should do going, moving into the next game. I've preached it before, and I really think that tonight's another example of that. Obviously, the whole team kind of shit the bed after, like, they all fell asleep, like I'm saying. But I think that we need to kind of shuffle these lines around, get some more speed, change things up just a little bit. We've dropped two and looked pretty damn slow, even though it's been close in that Vancouver game. There are a lot of elements in both this game that you can compare them to, especially considering the Canucks had lost five in a row, and their power play was the worst, right? There's elements in both this game you compare to, especially in that third period. So, as always, 
What are your thoughts? Let me know. I was not a big fan of this game at the end of it. Obviously, those last two periods really kind of killed it for me. They had a great momentum in the first. What did you guys think of this game? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Regardless of the team that you root for, excuse me, make sure to subscribe. I'm a biased Jets fan, as you can't already tell that, but I love talking about all the teams hockey, and I'm going to branch out and start talking about more teams sooner than later, I hope, if I can ever find the time. But with all that being said, peace, love, and positivity. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go follow all my links down in the description below. New Prairie Puck podcast coming out on Wednesday with a very, very special guest, so stay tuned for that. Have a great rest of your night. Go Jets go. Bye-bye.